Happy Hump Day. My name is Jeremy, and this is Midweek News, episode 91 for August 28th, 2024. Let's get into it. AMD to acquire ZT systems to accelerate AMD powered AI infrastructure. Once the acquisition is complete, ZT Systems will become part of the AMD Data Center Solutions Business Group. AMD expects the transaction to increase earnings by the end of 2025. Cody 21.1 Omega has arrived. With this release, the Cody Foundation has turned its development resources to the ongoing work that will become Cody 22 Pierce. Cody is a well-established home theater system that runs just about everywhere, including Windows, Linux, Android, macOS, Raspberry Pi, and WebOS. Test your computer and smartphone AI capabilities with Geekbench AI 1.0. Available across the Big 5 desktop and mobile platforms. Free for mobile. On the desktop, users can use the Home Edition for free or fork out $99 for a Pro license, which includes automated testing and offline results management. For reference, on the M1 Mac Mini, I get the following results. For CPU, single precision, 2836. Half precision, 4294. Quantized score is 3576. For the GPU... Single precision, 4520. Half precision, 4873. Quantized score, 4389. And the neural engine, single precision, 1821. Half precision, 12521. And a quantized score of 12661. July 2024, Linux market share hits 4.45%. To quote ACDC, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. A similar observation could be made about Linux. The march of market share for Linux moves slowly, but it is moving in a positive direction. The August Windows Security Update breaks dual boot on Linux systems. Yes, Microsoft has admitted to this issue. The issue is caused by Microsoft's decision to apply a Secure Boot Advanced Targeting Update to block Linux bootloaders unpatched against CVE 2022-2601, Grub2 Secure Boot Bypass Vulnerability, which could, quote, have an impact on Windows security. I've said it before, and I'll shout it from the rooftops now, Dual boot is a very bad idea. Storage is cheap. Get a second SSD. The Cosmic Desktop is now on Manjaro Linux. If you like the idea of the Cosmic Desktop but have to be in the Arch ecosystem, this might be just the solution for you. This is still the 1.0 alpha version so don't get your hopes up too high about stability. It's just reassuring that the desktop will be available to more users. GNOME 47 Beta Desktop Released. Set for release on September 18th for the full version. GNOME 47 brings support for hardware encoding, screen recordings, support for tablet tool key bindings and actions, support for tablet tool pressure ranges, other improvements include enhanced sticky behavior with, transluc uh, with transient dialogues, ability to recover from secondary GPU update failures, Epiphany web browser enhancements, and GNOME Calendar can now import ICS files using drag and drop. This is looking like an exciting release for GNOME users. In case you missed it, LibreOffice 24.8 is out. If you've been living under a rock, the Document Foundation introduced a new version numbering scheme earlier this year. LibreOffice now gets a major release in February and August, thus the 24.2 and 24.8 version numbers. 
24.8 version includes some nice features and bug fixes. Remove personal information on saving will remove author names and timestamps. A password based ODF encryption that promises that promises enhanced performance. Writer has received UI enhancements and a new find deck in the sidebar. Calc received new functions. Impress also receives some great enhancements. Find out more at LibreOffice.org. Available for free on Linux, macOS, Windows, and Android. File sharing phishing attacks increase 350%. The finance industry is the most targeted. Big surprise there. The report claims that 60% of file sharing attacks are sent using legitimate domains. Attackers also use platforms like Dropbox, ShareFile, and DocuSign to amplify their attacks and establish trust with victims. The article is an interesting read, and it does include a link to the full report from Abnormal Security. How to install and configure our syslog server and client on Ubuntu 24.04. Another great tutorial from the How to Forge people. Even if you use another logging solution, having knowledge of our syslog is never a bad thing. This time, it's targeting the latest Ubuntu 2404, but it shouldn't be too difficult to adapt the instructions to another Linux distribution. ProtonVPN finally adds WireGuard support for Linux users. This is available for both free and paid users. WireGuard generally offers better performing and more secure VPN experience than other options. I will definitely be testing this one out. Microsoft plans Windows security overhaul after CrowdStrike outage. Microsoft is holding an event for, quote, industry peers, unquote, at its campus on September 10th. This may sound to some as an admission of guilt on the part of Microsoft for giving third-party vendors such intimate access to the Windows kernel. I just hope that something comes out of this, but Microsoft is a big company and changes are likely to take a good while. Don't bet on any major changes until sometime in 2025 at the very earliest. GIMP 3.0 is coming with some great changes. GIMP development has entered the final stretch after a string freeze announcement for finalizing translation efforts. Here is some of what you can expect. A more beginner-friendly welcome screen. GIMP 3.0 introduces the stroke selection tool. GIMP 3.0 also introduces non-destructive layer effects, responsive layer resizing and new snapping features, and better color spaces and font management. Although I'm not a GIMP power user, I am looking forward to the fresh UI design and taking a deeper look at some of these features. Apple's M4 Max coming in the fall might start with 16 gigs of RAM as a baseline for the first time. A new report from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman claims that Apple may be increasing the base memory on new Macs from 8 to 16 gigabytes. This is good news because even with the 16 gigs in my Mac Mini M1, I really wish it had 24 or 32 gigs, and that may be an option now as an at-purchase upgrade on the M4 Max. Of course, this is Apple we're talking about, so you can likely expect a price increase on the base models. Regardless, this is a welcome update. And finally, Setting up Kodi Media Center on Linux. From How To Geek, the article talks about installing Kodi using your package manager after you add the official Kodi repository, launching Kodi and setting up folders containing your media, using Kodi settings for personalization, including interface, playback, audio, add ons, parental controls, and streaming to other devices in your home. If you're interested in a video on Kodi, let me know in the comments. And that, my loyal fans, will bring us to the end of another Midweek News. This has been episode 
91 for August 28, 2024. Have a great day.